Uh, so question 11 actually might be a fairly easy question. Do I want to? Yeah, this is uh, what I would like to call a conceptual question masquerading as a, uh, masquerading as a, <laughs> a quantitative question. So let me, um, let me do this question just uh, uh, right here. And the only thing I would uh, need to do is, I'm, well, you know, I'm gonna, instead of my regular calculator, I'm going to use Wolfram Alpha. The main benefit in using Wolfram Alpha is that it knows the constants. So I can just say Coulomb constant instead of trying to look it up. So, um, so it says a uh, metallic sphere of some radius is positively charged. Uh, yeah, positively charged here, which spreads, uh, stands on an insulated stand, okay, surrounded by a larger metallic spherical shell. Now a negative charge of minus five coulomb, micro coulomb is charged there, spread on you, answer below. Okay, this is the usual uh, reference, that's good. Okay, now it asks, so what is the electric potential immediately outside the shell, uh, outside, the which, outside the larger shell? And the surprising answer here is that it's a zero. Surprising if uh, uh, you've forgotten Gauss's law stuff. If you remember Gauss's law stuff, then I hope it's not all that surprising because what this setup basically describes is a setup with an electric field that looks like this. You have, um, you, you have electric field between these two uh, spheres, you know, away from the positive charge towards the negative charge. And what I hope you see with the description of these charges is that the amount of positive charge here is the same magnitude as the amount of negative charge here. Meaning if I consider a Gaussian surface that's out here at any distance that uh, that actually doesn't even have to be spherically symmetric, but in order to make the argument that I want to make that electric field is zero, you want this to be spherically symmetric. When you consider the Gaussian surface, you recognize, oh, I'm enclosing zero net charge. Therefore, the electric field here, it has to be zero. And skipping a few steps in the Gaussian law argument, but you know, with that knowledge that out here, the electric field is zero, then you can imagine applying the, the definition of a voltage. The change in voltage as you go from A to B is the line integral from A to B of minus E dot DL. So set A to be out at infinity, bring it in here. It was zero the whole way, so no change in voltage. So voltage at this point is same as the, as the voltage at infinity, so zero. Which means um, electric potential of the spherical shell is also zero. Because um, as you go from here to here, it, nothing's changed. I mean, the, the electric field, you, have, you weren't going against any electric field. And even if you were, it's an infinitesimal distance. When you make a DL zero, the integral is zero. Um, unless it happens to be delta function. Dirac delta function. So um, <laughs> if we don't have any of that, that's quantum mechanics stuff. <laughs> so, uh, so as we cross here, the potential is not gonna change. So potential here will be zero as well. The only non-trivial part is the potential of the sphere. That's where I will actually need to, uh, let me move some of those around. So going from the, the outside the shell to this sphere, that's where electric field is now non-zero. So you actually have to apply this definition with non-trivial values. So, so let me uh, quickly go through that. So, so, my, um, so I think I know my strength of my electric field here. I have it memorized from you know, formulas, electric field due to a spherically uniform charge distribution outside the distribution is equal to Coulomb constant times the amount of charge divided by distance squared. That's the magnitude of electric field. 
And I'm going to just choose my path so that it's straight uh, from out to in. So um, when I set up this integral, it should be going from r equals six centimeter to five centimeter, going minus of that electric field, k e q over r squared. And this dot product, there are some consideration, you know, these two vectors, uh, the dl and the e, they are anti-parallel. So you, I do want you to think through the sign and the conclusion should be is that these uh, flipped limits of the integral actually handles that minus the sign you'd expect. So this uh, DL path element is just the DR. So uh, that's an easy integral. Let me just do that. Uh, so minus KEQ, those are just constant. They got pulled out. And I have the antiderivative of one over R squared. That's gonna be uh, minus one over R. If you're not sure, take the derivative of this. Make sure you get one over R squared back. I hope you do. So that's the antiderivative. And I evaluated at the limit from R equals six centimeter to five centimeter. Um, this is probably a good point that to stop and uh, plug in the numbers. So I recognize that the, the negative signs cancel out. So it's gonna be Coulomb constant times charge Q times parenthesis one over five centimeter minus one over six centimeter. So let me put that into from alpha and from alpha will do all the unique conversions and everything. So Coulomb constant, I already have that times five micro Coulomb. Sorry for the all the busy looking thing. I just didn't want to erase that yet. Uh, one over five centimeter minus one over six centimeter. Yeah, and I see that that difference will give me something positive, so that's good. So when I do that, the all from so you always check to make sure the all from alpha understood your expression correctly, and then what it gives me is there it is. Oh, well, that's fairly large, 149.8 kilovolts. Um, so 149.8 kilovolts, so two more zeros. I think that's right. Yeah, and yeah. Okay, and D is uh, uh, pretty simple. It's, again, uh, inside the sphere, your electric field is zero. So the, once you are inside a sphere, you're, oh, maybe uh, before that, so I should justify it here. So what I calculated here is a delta V, but because at point A, R equals six centimeter, my V is equal to zero, that delta V is V on this surface. And now that you have reached this amount of electric potential, when you go further in, into the region where electric field is zero, the potential doesn't drop to zero. Potential merely remains constant. So inside the sphere, inside the... Oh, wait, wait, sorry, I plugged in, plugged in the wrong numbers. So I misread the question. The small sphere is two centimeters. <laughs> the outer sphere is kind of thick. It has inner radius of five. It has uh, outer radius of six. So the limit to here should have been from five to two, not six to five. So let me correct that. It should have been five to two, five to two. So let me, this is where it's nice that I did this on all from alpha because it's a easy change of numbers. So with a change. My voltage is, um, <clears throat> let me just, so 1.348 times 10 to the six, so 1.348. Uh, 1.348 times 10 to the six. I'm just gonna use scientific notation. Um, okay, <laughs> so with that correction. So once you've reached this uh, two centimeter radius, um, inside, as you go inside, your potential remains constant. So it's gonna be the same value here. And it's, uh, even though the question doesn't ask you to, it's uh, instructive to draw the plot of the potential. 
what the plot of the potential will look like is potential as a function of the distance will look like, so way out at infinity, your potential will be zero. And as you have uh, reached the five centimeter mark at r equals five centimeters, the potential will begin to rise. And it'll rise in a way it looks like one over r. Um, yeah, so it'll, one over r, no, 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 it'll, it'll rise in a way so that it looks like, it, it'll look like uh, <laughs> one over, um, one over five centimeter minus one over r. So it'll look like, is it upside down version of one over r? I think that's what it's gonna look like. Let me just think through this. Because this is what's being, no, 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 um, let me <laughs> draw this correctly here. Um, so what's being get kept constant as you change your R, this is kept being kept constant. So it'll look like one over R minus one over five centimeter. Okay, so I think that's good. So it doesn't look like one over R just shifted the downward a little bit. So this is the uh, curve for one over R that you might expect to see. Um, you just shift it down enough so that at this point it crosses zero. So your potential will at this point begin to curve up something that resembles one over R. And when it reaches uh, two centimeter here, that's where it'll plateau again. So, um, so at these regions of plateau, the electric field is zero. The, the derivative of potential is zero. That's what you see here. And in this region where potential goes as one over R, the derivative will give you one over R squared. That's, um, so, you know, the question doesn't ask you to do this because Frankly, there's no way for the system to create it, but I hope you have a picture like that in mind so that you understand the concepts of this question, not just get stuck on uh, calculation because this is a conceptual question masquerading as a um, pretending to be quantitative question. <laughs>